Grace, mercy, and peace to you from God our Father, from our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. Amen. How many of you have heard Kermit the Frog sing his song, It's Not Easy Being Green? You heard that one before? Kermit kind of laments about the fact that he's green and sometimes that brings some challenges along with it. Another character who regularly finds himself lamenting is from Winnie the Pooh and you probably know who I'm talking about, Eeyore. He always finds himself lamenting about the things of life and how they have struck him. The reality is, is we can all at times identify with these types of characters. We can all identify with Kermit that it's not easy being green for whatever it is with us. We can identify with Eeyore who laments the things, the challenges, the struggles of life. Not every one of us can always identify with Tigger, but I would contend we can all identify with Eeyore. We all know what it is like to suffer in some way, at some time in our life. Everyone laments. Everyone suffers. So what do we do with that as Christian people? 2 Corinthians 4, 16 through 18. So we do not lose heart. Though our outer self is wasting away, our inner self is being renewed day by day. For this light, moment, momentary, for this light momentary affliction is preparing for us an eternal weight of glory beyond all comparison. As we look not to things that are seen, but to things that are unseen. For the things that are seen are transient, but the things that are unseen are eternal. Suffering is a reality that humanity has done great work to seek and attempt to avoid. Our society seeks to avoid all forms of suffering through various ways, various means. Suffering is something that we seek to get away from as quickly as possible. Suffering is that which is something that we don't ever want a part of our lives. Yet, what do we do with the suffering that is going to come. Because the reality is that suffering and what we do with it makes all the difference in the world. In the third chapter of Genesis, we hear a familiar story. We hear this familiar story that as suffering is ushered into creation, Adam and Eve again disobeyed the word of God. They ate that which they were not supposed to eat. They, they turned their back on the word of God and disobeyed that which had been put in front of them. In our reading today in our Old Testament, we got, well, the punishment for Satan. But right after that comes the introduction of the consequence of sin, which is suffering. Here again from Genesis chapter 3, a continuation of our reading from earlier. To the woman he said, I will surely multiply your pain in childbearing. In pain you shall bring forth children. Your desire shall be contrary to your husband, but he shall rule over you. And, Adam said, and, and to Adam he said, because you have listened to the voice of your wife and have eaten the tree of which I commanded you, you shall not eat of it. Curse it is the ground because of you. In pain you shall eat of it all the days of your life. Thorns and thistles it shall bring forth for you, and you shall eat the plants of the field by the sweat of your face you shall eat bread till you return to the ground. 
for out of it you were taken, for you are dust, and to dust you shall return. The introduction of suffering into creation as a consequence of that first sin. Everyone knows suffering. Everyone knows what it means to suffer. Now, some suffer more, some suffer less, but the reality is there is not a soul on earth that does not understand what it means to suffer. And one of the things that we tend to do with suffering is is that we want to find a cause for it. We want to find something, someone, some being to lay blame to that I am suffering, that you are suffering. We want to ascribe it to be someone else's fault. Adam blames God and in turn Eve. Eve blames God. The serpent, and we also just want to blame other people for our suffering. It's my friend's fault that we got in trouble for staying out too late. It's my spouse's fault that we cannot pay our bills. It's the drunk driver's fault that my son is dead. It's God's fault that the tornado destroyed my house. For many, when we find a reason for our suffering, we think, if I find the cause of it, then I will be able to rightly deal with it. But what I have found most often times is when there is a deep desire to find blame for one's suffering, it actually only amplifies the very suffering that they are going through. Because we will oftentimes react in anger. I want that thing, that person, that being, that object to suffer for causing me suffering. We want retribution. We want to have somebody punished. And when one seeks to blame others for their suffering, they tend to want to do the same thing that Satan desires to do, and that is seek and destroy. There very very well may be people who are rightly to blame for your suffering, but when your goal is to find blame, your suffering will only be amplified by more suffering. We become consumed with our suffering and amplified in our anger that it produces. Another common reaction to suffering is that we seek to hide it. I don't want to see hands, but how many of you have something that you're suffering with right now and you don't want anyone else to know about it? We tend to suffer in silence. We tend to want to hide this as a reality in our lives. We know there's a problem. We know that there is pain. We oftentimes know that we might even be partially responsible for that which brings about suffering. We might have screwed up the relationship. We might have screwed up the finances that have caused us problems. We understand that even though we may have had the best intentions, we didn't parent perfectly, and now we are suffering the consequences. And we want to hide that. We don't want anyone to know about it. We might let God hear our laments and our cries, 
But the reality is, just as Adam and Eve hid from God in the garden because of their sin, we too like to hide the consequence, the reality of the sins that we have committed, the sins that have happened to us, or just the sin that is a reality in creation and as we feel those consequences. Suffering is never dealt with alone very well. If you've noticed with the readings and what I've said thus far, how sin and suffering go hand in hand, it's pretty tough to separate the two. Whether that sin is something we ourselves have committed, whether that sin and suffering is due to simply a natural outgrowth of the consequence of sin, that original sin, we can see how they are intimately related. We can see that you cannot hide from the realities and the consequence of sin. Sometimes we think, oh, if I have, if I have enough wealth, then I, can, then I can get rid of all the suffering. What's interesting, though, is you will find oftentimes that some of the most well-to-do people have some of the greatest suffering. Suffering finds us all because sin has found us all. So what do we do with this as Christian people? The Christian sees suffering for what it is. We see it as a result of sin. Again, the sin might be my own personal sin. It might be someone else's sin against me. It might simply be the consequence of original sin and the fallen world. But we can acknowledge that the result of sin is always suffering. But that in and of itself is only half the Christian response. We can say that this, we can say those things, right? But that's only part of the way. That's only part of what we might want to acknowledge in our lives as Christian people. We can acknowledge these things. We can acknowledge the reality of our own sin, the sin of others, and original sin. But our response needs to go further. If our response is to simply try to hide from it or get rid of it or, or, or make it disappear, we are going to miss perhaps what God is doing in the midst of suffering. Suffering may even be a blessing to us. Yes, I said, a blessing. Suffering for the Christian drives us to one place. Suffering should drive us to God. And more specifically, suffering drives us to Jesus. The goal for the Christian in suffering is not to whitewash it and say things like, I am too blessed to be depressed, or to deny that there is any pain at all, Rather, it is to acknowledge the very real things that we go through in life. To acknowledge our laments before God. To acknowledge that what we are struck with is not an enjoyable, it is not a, a, a fun thing to be experiencing. And in doing that, we are brought to one very important place. If you look to the altar, you will see there the ultimate suffering depicted in the crucifix. In our suffering, we are brought to the foot of the cross. to acknowledge that where this suffering has been dealt with, where our own suffering is dealt with, is where sin was dealt with. 
It doesn't make it a pretty thing. It doesn't make it a wonderful thing. But it does bring us to where it was dealt with. And for the Christian, we know what happens three days later where Christ rose from the dead and he says, in the midst of your own suffering, this promise is yours as well. So when we suffer, when we come to the casket of a beloved, we can say, we are suffering, we are lamenting this reality, this is not how it was supposed to be, but I know the promises of God. That in my suffering, I am drawn to Christ's suffering where he dealt with the reality of what causes my suffering. The sin I have committed, the sin that has happened to me, and the sin that infects us all that we are born with. As, our, as we are wasting away 2 Corinthians, we can take comfort that there is something greater for us even while we still suffer. But so that we do not lose heart, I invite you, brothers and sisters, to go to the cross and see where the suffering was dealt with. Christ suffered for you and Christ suffers with you still today. May you take comfort in that reality. May I end this morning with a brief quote from Martin Luther. Christian suffering is nobler and precious above all other human sufferings because since Christ himself suffered, he also hallowed the sufferings of all his Christians. May we go to the cross once again with our tears, with our pains, with our laments, and know the promise that is there for us. May we engage our world knowing that suffering is a reality, but it is not the last word. Rather, the words of Christ, when he will call us from the grave to new life, to be with him for all eternity will make all of this suffering pale in comparison to the glory we will have in the presence of our Savior, Jesus. May we take comfort in that reality today. In Jesus' name, amen. At this time,